What's up guys? I'm going to do a little something different today and um, I can't tell you how many videos I have of failed repairs um, just rabbit holes um, stuff that um, we attempt to fix you know boot looping whatever NAND problems SD RAM problems CPU problems we got millions of them and uh, you know the I think a successful business I mean you just can't try to fix everything. You try to fix everything and you're going to be spending your thumbs wasting your time on things that uh, you know that uh, either take way too long to fix or are unrepairable and uh, and you know you let uh, real repairs that you know you have solid solutions for um, you know sit on the side and and uh, you know those those are the ones you really make money on you know um, you know but at the same time you know we 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 love the thrill of fixing things, you know. We we love the thrill of, of, uh, um, you know, looking at a phone and saying, okay, this is this is, you know, uh, solving something. That's 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 kind of what uh, that's kind of why I like doing this, you know, is um, you know, you're 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 given um, a phone and uh, and you have to essentially just break it down and and you know look at the schematics, look at ZXW tools and and try to diagnose troubleshoot and fix it you know that's and then once you fix it that's kind of like the, the, the thrill of it you know and that's why we do these things you know um, but uh, so the point of this video is this all right uh, the point of this video is you can't fix everything and here's I'm gonna give you an example of one <laughs> this is an iPhone 7 here this is uh, a a1778 version which is the GSM version and um, you know it's, it's it's really the only reason why I took this on is because you know the a1660 version is is the CDMA version which is notorious for baseband issues at this point and the baseband issue is you know you might be able to solve one or two but I think out of a hundred you know you might solve one or two maybe you know so that so in that regard I just don't think it's it's a very um, it's a very worthwhile repair to take on, you know, and and it really sucks because we're running into a problem now where um, you know a lot of these touch ICs are you know six and six plus repairs are going away. We, I can't tell you the last time I saw a six uh, backlight system repair. You know, those were prevalent back in uh, you know six months ago. They were maybe a little longer than that, but uh, they're they're pretty much gone now because people are upgrading and and not repairing now. That's what we're seeing, and we're seeing a lot of these sevens come in now because they're they're just past the one year warranty. And um, and anyways, let's let's get to this thing, okay? Because <laughs> I don't think anybody shows you failed or uh, repairs that uh, don't work. And okay, so I have a a six here, or I'm sorry, seven here, and here's what it does, okay? I'm gonna show you disconnect, reconnect. I'm gonna plug it in, and you'll see the Apple logo flash for a bit turns black. I plug it in and, and iTunes recognizes it. Okay, so you will see it in iTunes, which I'm going to show you in two seconds here. Okay, here you go. It says update or restore. Okay, and I'm going to try to restore. I've already done the restore on this thing. Okay, but uh, so you can do either or, and you'll have to trust me on this because uh, let's see. You know what? I don't even think I have 1131 downloaded, and, and our internet is so damn slow here that it's gonna take like 10 years to download. So you got to trust me on this. But uh, I'm gonna kind of cancel this because we got Cox, Cox uh, internet at work here, and I'm pretty sure it's going at like one megabit per second or some garbage like that. Um, but so it it's going to fail to, once it downloads starts updating and stuff like that you know it extracts the software and then it gets to um it gets to uh i'm going to pause it real quick so i can all right sorry so i i've already done it on another computer here and uh not the one that i'm recording video on so i'm going to kind of show you what happens so it says verifying with apple and then it doesn't even really start the the, the restore process and um and uh, and so here's what I did so far. So the first thing I I normally do is I will um, I don't know what's going on here. All right. So after I plug it in and try to do an update, so long as data is not uh, necessary, I will pop it off and uh. So the error code is six, and you know I'll look it up and. Um, somebody compiled a list of error codes, but I'm not 100%. Uh, I'm not 100% into uh, 
you know what they wrote. I think there's a wiki on it. You can you can probably do a search on it. Um, but for this instance, error six, it says, uh, what does it say? What does the wiki say? Let's see. Error six. Okay, it says not enter the downgrading mode. Change USB port. The back one of chassis is better. And restart computer. I have no idea what that means. I'm assuming just probably just use another USB port. And then the second thing it says, unable to resize partition due to full storage problem at final stage of updating firmware. Okay, that sounds a little bit better, but that doesn't tell me how to fix it. The error may be bypass restart and do exit recovery, but you probably need to re-update one more time. Uh, negative. I don't even know what the hell this guy's talking about, whoever created this wiki. Anyways, um, so let's see. And then what I also do is there's a Facebook group, Intro to Micro Soldering. I'd recommend you join that if you haven't already. It's got a lot of uh, useful knowledge in there, and you know, so I'll do a search in that Facebook group and see if anybody's encountered this problem before. And I did find somebody else that that uh, has encountered this problem, and he said, uh, you know, shop game iPhone 7 boot loops after a drop. Restore error gives it, restore gives me error six. Um, and nobody really had anything to say about it. Um, so uh, my guess is that this thing was dropped and then it stopped working. All right, um, my guy told me that it just all of a sudden just stopped working one day. You know, which could also be the case. Um, but I think a drop seems more likely. So when drop when you have drop damage, I mean, you know, the truth is the problem could be anything. You know, um, so what I what I do is I just desolder the shields. You know, because people are paying us to inspect this thing, so I'll I'll, I'll inspect it. You know, for the most part. Um, and, and, yeah, so what I'll do is, uh, hold on. Alright, so what I'll do is, you know, I'll desolder the shield here, and I'll just take a quick gander at, uh, the entire logic board, really, to see if I notice anything that's, you know, obviously burnt. You, so, when you're inspecting the logic board, you look for something that's, like, you know, just out of whack, you know, it just doesn't look normal, and, um, maybe a crack in a chip or something like that, and I didn't see anything, you know, I went through this entire logic board already, and, uh, I got nothing, nothing. Anyways, yeah, I got nothing, you know, and I don't think this phone had never been opened, maybe opened once, but, you know, this was after the, um, the problem had already happened, so I, I don't suspect any, any damage from the, you know, whoever opened it last, um, so inspect it. Next thing I do also is I'll stick my multimeter in dire mode and I'll just start measuring some uh some common power lines, you know. Um uh, and this is just from experience, but I know that this is VDD main right here and you know, I'm getting point three three on that. And then, you know, you can go to ZXW tools here and and look for some other power lines and um you know, these are the CPU lines here. So I just kind of measure a few of these and these all these all check fine. Uh, compared to a uh, known good board, um, and and then you know I'll I'll pop over to the NAND here and I'll check the NAND, and uh, you know these are all you know uh, these are all fine compared to a known good board. Where? If, let's see. I thought it had popped up a little bit, but nope, I don't see anything. So, um, and then uh, I know I'm kind of going uh, all all out of whack here, but um, another thing I I do is I look at the updater logs. Okay, so updater logs are it's going to be your username, app data, roaming, Apple computer, iTunes iPhone updater logs and and uh, you know this is going to show you the updater log of uh, you know the error that you get uh, when it fails. So I actually did this on another computer. So I copied it over here from another computer, and I'm going to show you what it says. Okay, uh, you can just open it up in a regular text text uh, editor, Notepad, WordPad, whatever. And I just go I just go down to the bottom here. And uh, so if you go down to the bottom here, you can see error six, right? Failed handling, NAND firmware, uh, ECC, you know, that just tells me that eh, maybe it's a NAND problem. And then you kind of scroll up a little bit and you're like, um, update NAND again. You see a lot of NAND problems here. So I think you would probably, 
um, probably you can probably assume NAND, which is why I'm checking the NAND voltages, you know. And um, so yeah, so based on this error log, yep, you can assume it is NAND. All right, um, you can you know I checked diode mode in this NAND already, and 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 they seem fine, fine. I've checked. Uh, let's see. I should probably check the one V eight as well. There you go. Let's let's check this PP one V eight NAN line. Wherever the hell that is. Maybe there isn't one. There it is right here. Okay, let's. I haven't checked this one yet actually. So let's let's just make sure I check this one as well. Let's just cover all of our bases here. Okay. So it's gonna be. It's gonna be this right here. Point three five five, and then you know you can you can bring in your other. This is a donor board here, uh, known good, and you can compare them. Point three seven seven. Okay, that's close enough. So I, you know, I don't think it's a NAND problem. Uh, I mean, if anything, it it would be probably the NAND maybe separated maybe, but you know, I, even if it once it gets down to the NAND, I'm not I'm not taking the NAND off and uh, and putting it back on <laughs> because even if even if that does fix it, it's not going to be a repair that we offer anyways uh, for the seven because if you look at this thing, man, it's encased in this black epoxy, man, and Gosh, it's it's just gonna be a nightmare to try to get it off here, and um, you know, keep all these little components back, stay, you know, on there and stuff like that, and get it back on. And chances are that it may not even fix it. You know, maybe it'll fix it, but even if it did fix it, I mean, we're just I mean, we're just not gonna offer it because it's gonna take way too long, and and um, you know, there could be other complications with it. You know, so um, and then you know the last thing I do is I'm just kind of going through all the troubleshooting tips of failed repair you know uh, what we do of course I do is just a little bit faster but you know sometimes I still spend an hour or two on this, these stupid things you know I try not to because uh, uh, you know once you determine that it's it's a no fix I mean just close that sucker back up and and, uh, and and call it a day you know and so I'll stick another housing into it so I'll stick it into another housing and uh, you know you really just want to um, plug in the essential uh, the essential things you know um, you don't even have to we've, we've actually seen an instance where the, the, the power cable is actually causing a boot loop you know <laughs> so you want to minimize as many issues as po possible you know and um, I know that this housing is good so I'm gonna plug in the power cable I'm gonna plug in the you uh, the lightning adapter here and uh, and you can even use a new screen if you want, but uh, I know this screen is good, so I don't. I just plug in the home button, and so that it'll it won't take forever to boot up. Um, you don't even need to do that, I guess, in this case, since it's just stuck at the Apple logo. And and plug in the battery, and then you know you plug it in one more time, and same thing's gonna happen. You can try another restore, and we've already done that, and same thing's gonna happen. Okay, so so you get that you get the Apple logo and flashes off. Same thing happens after a restore. So it's not the housing. You can pull everything else out after that. And uh, I think that's that's it. You know, like uh, you know, we determined that it's possibly the NAND. Uh, maybe it is the NAND. Maybe it's you know the power lines going to the NAND. But again, it's it's a uh, no fix. So we're calling this a day here. And uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, we're just gonna put this shield back on here and um, reassemble the thing and send it back. I mean, it, you know, and I, I've i got probably hundreds of videos here of failed repairs, you know. Maybe failed is not the right term. Maybe repairs that are just not worth worth the time and effort to repair, you know. Um, you know, if this were mission critical, then maybe we'd, we'd invest a little more time in it. Uh, you know, maybe if, yeah, maybe we'd invest a little more time into it, you know, but, but uh, this is not one of those instances, you know. I mean, yeah. So yeah. So I mean this is this is it. I mean uh I hate to say it but uh you know I think a lot of people encounter these issues, you know, and people just don't talk about it, you know, but it happens all the time and and um you know you get a lot of these issues and uh yeah, you just call it a day and tell the customer to upgrade whatever, you know, sell it as is and and use it for parts and and that's it, man, be on their way, you know. And I think Apple I think Apple kind of enjoys that as well, right? I mean, they want people to upgrade. You know, if people kept their phones for 5, 10 years. I mean, that's not going to do Apple very good. Um so so I mean, I'm not saying that they create these these problems in these phones, but they definitely uh they they definitely don't try to fix it. Um, you know, they definitely don't put as much uh, QA in it uh, as they 
they probably should maybe or you know because you know if you look at touch IC disease right I mean six and six plus they de Apple definitely knew about it because in the 6s and the 6s plus they actually put Mason the Mason chip on the screen right so they definitely I mean they definitely knew about it otherwise why in the world would they put the chip on the screen right doesn't make sense so I think Apple probably knows about all these issues and uh, and and you know their their idea of uh, of, of fixing these things is uh, you know wait for people to complain enough and then they'll offer some stupid you know hundred and fifty dollar fix or you know whatever it is make it just painful enough that it's gonna make you decide whether to upgrade or you know to pay hundred fifty dollars get another phone with the same problem you know and uh, they just kinda wear you down until you finally just give in and just upgrade you know buy a new phone um, but uh, so yeah I mean this is an instance of a repair that's just not worth it. Uh, call it a day, man. And uh, there's plenty of these out there that we deal with every day. It really sucks, you know. But uh, but that's just the nature of this business. And um, I don't even know if people will watch a video like this when, when there's no repair at <laughs> stake. But uh, I just want to put it out there and see what uh, let's see what people thought of it. I guess. All right, peace. Thank you for watching our videos. Just wanted to let you know that we have an online course out there. Um, it is a comprehensive course which covers everything from uh, understanding components all the way to data recovery. And in between that, we have a ZXW Tools course and um, uh, three of the most common repairs backlight, touch, charge. So we actually created a course. It's three and a half hours of content, and it's the full curriculum. It's four courses combined into one. We've added sections on there, bonus sections, to show you how to set up your hot air station, your soldering iron, and um, in your DC power supply. And, and we're going to be adding stuff uh, probably just about every week here to this course. Um, the course is 150 bucks. We host it at Udemy.com. If you want to buy it. Uh, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, and then click on microsoldering the full curriculum. Thanks for watching.